Nice to meet you, Liam. Hey, how's it going? Good, thanks. My name is Dr. Scully. I'm a kidney specialist here at the Toronto General Hospital. Your family doctor sent me a note about your kidney health, in particular a problem that seemed to be occurring with thirst yeah. and uh, going to the bathroom a lot, making a lot of urine. Yeah. Do you want to tell me about that? Yeah, so uh, about a week ago, I have had to constantly pee. Um, it's getting really like disruptive to my like lifestyle. I have to wake up in the night to go pee a lot. Yeah. And then I also like, I'm really thirsty whenever really thirsty. I wake up. So around the clock, fair, fair to say. Pretty much, yeah. Did anything happen to you a week ago? Is there anything different in your life or activity? About a week ago too, I got into a skateboarding accident. Um, so I like went off a jump and like landed and hit my head. Did you lose consciousness? No. Uh, and you didn't go to the emergency department? No. I so thought, you were able to shake it off? Yeah, I thought it was fine. Yeah. Headache at all? Not too bad, like nothing okay. really. Like, and did you have any bleeding in your ears or in your nose from your nose? No, it wasn't like it seemed like it was fine. Is there any history in you of diabetes? No. Any family history of diabetes? Mm, don't think so. Is there any history in your family of mental health disease? Not with me and like not in my like not in a family that I know. How much alcohol would you drink in a day? No, not, not too much. Like I, I, don't, I usually don't drink. I, I study, but like um, you know, I do partake like when there's some parties going on and sure. stuff like that. Yeah. So, but not like in a but social amount. social yeah, drinking. I, I social and, drinking. All right. Now campus is full of recreational drugs. I wouldn't know anything about that. That's okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, no, no judgment implied. Just asking to make sure. Of that. Yeah, I don't do anything. Okay. All right. Any other health considerations that you have want to make me aware of? No, just that, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. When I think about what you've told me of, in terms of how you had the abrupt onset of a high urine volume and thirst following a head injury, it makes me think that the underlying problem really relates to brain damage following the head injury. And the part of the brain we're most concerned about when we have the, when someone has these symptoms is the posterior pituitary. That part of your brain makes a hormone that regulates the amount of urine the kidney makes. So it's quite possible that when you have the head injury, there was a damage to the posterior pituitary. And we call that central diabetes insipidus. And at this point, I think we need to do some investigations to determine if indeed that is the case. Okay. What we would like to do is to start off with some special x-rays, and at the same time have you seen in our endocrine test center, which is just down the hall from the clinic here. Sure. So the imaging and the testing should allow us to determine what is causing your high urine flow rates and increased thirst. So if I have, if I have like brain damage, like can you fix, like will it be able to be fixed? Yeah, or? no, it's a big concern. So you, the question is, are you gonna to have to spend the rest of your life drinking lots of water and yeah. getting up all night? And, and the answer is no. We would look for recovery over time, but we have medicines that can lead to a sudden improvement in your symptoms and help you lead a much more normal life. Okay. In preparation for the fluid deprivation test, Liam has not had anything to eat or drink for 10 hours. During the test, Liam cannot eat or drink until the test is complete, which can take between 4 to 10 hours. Have you taken any medications this morning? No. Okay, excellent. Are you allergic to anything? No. Okay. So the test is pretty straightforward. I'll be checking your blood pressure. I will draw your blood. I'll give you a bottle. You will go to the bathroom and pee, leave it in the bottle, because then I'll go in the bathroom and measure and stuff, and then we will get weight. So every hour we'll do this in the same order. Why it's important to do it in the same order is because things can change, um, and we'll see changes. So if you lose more than, you know, a certain amount of weight, greater than 3%, we should probably call the doctor and maybe have you eat and drink something okay. at that point. After about four hours, I'll be contacting your doctor and then we'll review your blood tests, your urine tests, your blood pressure and your weight. At that time, the doctor will most likely have me give you an, a needle. It's a very small needle, just in your arm. Then we will continue the test exactly the same. Blood pressure, blood, urine, weight. 
and at that point I'll probably give you something to eat or drink and um, then I'll contact the doctor maybe two or three hours after that and then you're free to go home. All right, sounds good. Okay? Yep. Perfect. Assuming Liam has central diabetes insipidus, once injected with arginine vasopressin analog, his urine output would decrease and his urine would be more concentrated. Blood and urine are collected and taken to the core lab where it is tested for urine osmolality, serum osmolality, urine specific gravity, and electrolytes. Osmolality is a measure of the amount of dissolved particles that are in a liquid. So what we're doing with the osmometer is basically freezing the liquid um, and the point at which it freezes um, will give us an indication of how many particles are in it because of something called freezing point depression. So the more particles that are in the solution, the lower the freezing point will be. Any of the things that need to come to the chemistry department, for the most part, will get loaded onto our automation system. The conveyor belt will take it from there and they'll get sent to the appropriate kind of analyzer for the tests that they have on them. From there, they just go around again and they get into our storage system and that's all that we really need to do with them. The automation system is really wonderful. MRI scanners use strong magnetic fields in combination with radio waves and magnetic field gradients. Any part of the body can be scanned and these methods can be used to detect tumors, traumatic injuries and infections. With Liam's MRI image, uh, we see damage to uh, the pituitary stalk, which is the area connecting the base of the brain to the pituitary gland. The damage actually isn't to the pituitary gland itself, uh, but because that stalk is disrupted, uh, the antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin usually is transported through this mechanism. Its supply is disrupted. Liam suffers from inability to secrete and store this hormone properly and thus develops the symptoms of what we call diabetes insipidus. So lots of urination which can't be controlled in the way it is with normal people. So Liam, the tests that we performed have established a diagnosis of central diabetes insipidus, indicating that your kidney function was normal. Your kidneys retain the ability to respond to the hormone, but your posterior pituitary was not able to release the hormone. Now what I'm going to do for you now is write you a prescription for a drug called desmopressin. This is a synthetic version of the hormone. So you can go to the pharmacy, fill the prescription and start taking it, and then I'd like to see you back here in clinic in one week's time so we can gauge the impact of the treatment on your urine flow and thirst. All right, All right so you take care, look after yourself. An understanding of the protein structure of the neuropeptide vasopressin allowed companies to develop vasopressin analogs that can be used as drugs. For for else? Fortunately for patients like Liam, there are synthetic versions of vasopressin that can be prescribed. They are administered either orally, sublingually, intranasally, subcutaneously, or by injection. They help to restore the ability of the kidney to concentrate Hi. urine. Are you Liam? Yes. My name is Marissa. I'm one of the pharmacists that works here. Okay. Um, we have a new prescription for you. Uh, it's called Desmopressin. This medication is actually quite well tolerated. There's not very many side effects. Okay. Sometimes people will complain of a bit of a, a headache or a bit of nausea, upset stomach, but that usually goes away after you've taken a few doses. Okay. I've also printed out this handout on the medication. It goes through everything that we talked about today. Okay. If you have any questions, you can call me anytime here at the pharmacy. Okay. Okay, and um, just as a reminder, desmopressin, you're going to take this three times a day. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, it, would it be okay if I call you in a few days to see how the medication's working for you? Yeah, of course. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Right, awesome. Great. I hope you uh, feel better and a speedy recovery. All right, thanks. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. This is a case of central diabetes insipidus. Central diabetes insipidus is due to deficiency of the neuropeptide vasopressin and the inability of the posterior pituitary to release this hormone in response to rising serum osmolality. The cause of Liam's central diabetes insipidus was brain trauma and damage to the posterior pituitary. His kidney function was normal, but he was unable to regulate his urine flow rates because vasopressin was absent. Treatment is usually with a synthetic hormone called desmopressin. 
The treatment will certainly make him feel better and it will go a long ways towards restoring his quality of life. Thank you.